Hello everybody, in this video on Python scripting in Krita, I'm going to go over a few things about plugins that I didn't cover in my first video on plugins, namely how to create manuals for your plugins and how to create customizable shortcuts for your plugins so that they can appear in your shortcuts menu in Krita and you can assign them to keyboard shortcuts. Now to begin with, I'm going to cover how to create manuals. As you can see, I am in the local share Krita Pi Krita directory which stores all of the extensions, the plugins that I've created. Um, and you can see here that I have one called My Extension. If we navigate into the My Extension directory, you can see that it has an init and a myextension.py library file that is used to actually create the extension. And I've actually already loaded up this extension into Krita. So if I go to Tools, Scripts, My Extension, and click it, you can see that all that it does is create a little test window with an OK button that I can close off. That's just to show you what the extension actually does, how we can know it's running. It's not actually important what it does. What is actually important if we go here to settings, configure Krita, where we would normally enable the Python plugin, my extension, we can go down here and if we click it, you can see that it says here in this description area, no manual available. Now this is not true of the manual of the extensions that come built into Krita, such as 10 brushes. It'll have a little manual page down here that describes information about it or color space, the same thing. This is because if we want our My Extension plugin to have a manual, we're going to have to create one. Now manuals in Krita are just HTML pages. If we go back here to the local share Krita Pi Krita My Extension directory, I can actually go ahead and create a manual by running vim on manual.html, which will create a new page called manual.html. Now this is just a regular HTML document. If you've ever done any web development, you're probably pretty familiar with HTML, but if you're not, you can look it up online. HTML is very simple. It's a markup language. You should be able to learn the important stuff for this use of HTML pretty quickly. Now, the first tag that we're going to put in here is HTML to indicate that this is an HTML document. Now, this is not going to be a web page, so we don't need to specify the doc type in here. And we also don't have to actually use the head and body tags. In case you didn't know, those are actually optional tags. And in this case, we're not going to need them at all. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of information in here. I'm going to put H1 to make a header and we'll say this is my extension and then close the h1 tag and then in a paragraph tag we'll say this is a test extension just to give us some text to show up when we actually load this manual up so let's go ahead and close the html tag right quit and you can see here that we now have this in the my extension directory this manual.html now we've created the manual but we're going to have to tell krita to look for this particular html document when it loads up the my extension plugin so we're going to do that actually in the my extension dot desktop file which we use to tell Krita where the library is actually located and we do this with a new tag an optional tag here called x krita manual equals and then the name of the manual html document it will look for this document in the same directory that it looks for the plugin specified by this dot desktop file which again we define here in xkde library as the directory my extension so it's going to look in the my extension directory for this manual so we only need to say the name of the manual html document here which is just manual.html now we can go ahead and write the changes there and go back over here to Krita and restart. And if we go here to settings, configure Krita, like we were going to enable this plugin, Python plugin manager, we can click my extension and see the text that we created. This is my extension heading and this is a test extension paragraph. So that's all there is to creating manuals. It's just a simple HTML document and you tell Krita where to find it in the .desktop file that you created along with your extension. Okay, the next thing that we're going to learn how to do is how to create customizable keyboard shortcuts for your scripts. Now, we will do this in a .action file, which is an XML document. But before we go to making that file, we actually need to get a little bit of information about our extension first. So I'm going to use Vim to open up my extension, myextension.py. And the information that I'm looking for is actually going to be here on this line in the create actions function called action equals window dot create action. And what I care about is this string here, my extension test, my underscore extension underscore test. Now this string is the unique name of the action that I created when I created this test extension. I covered how to do this in my third video in the Krita Python tutorial where I talked about creating extensions. 
This string is used by Krita to identify this particular action in the extension apart from all the other actions that other scripts might have in them. It has to be a unique name. And one of the important reasons that that is so is that we can actually use that to create custom keyboard shortcuts. So just take note of this my underscore extension underscore test string because we will be using it in just a minute. Now the first thing that we're going to have to actually do is navigate out of the PyCrita directory back to the local share Krita and go to the local share Krita actions directory. Now this directory may not exist for you. I had to create it, but that is the directory where these dot action files will actually go. So let's go ahead and navigate there. And as you can see right now, this particular directory is empty. Now I'm going to go ahead and use Vim to create a new file called my extension dot action. So let's go ahead and go into that. And then I have a template that I got from the Krita Python documentation. Uh, I will provide a link below for how to get this template. And I'm going to go ahead and paste this into the document here. And because this doesn't end in .xml, Vim doesn't know that we want syntax highlighting. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's do set fc equal or ft equals xml, which will provide us with some syntax highlighting to make it a little easier to read. Now this template is exactly what all the shortcut files that you're going to create are going to end up looking like. And it is just a template, so there are a few things that we're going to have to change to make it work with the extension that we've already created, the my extension extension. But I will go ahead and go line by line here to explain what all this stuff means and make changes to make it match with our extension as I go. Now the first line up here is just going to be the XML declaration line, which is used by an XML compiler to tell information about the document, such as what version of XML you're going to use, 1.0, and what the character encoding is in this case UTF-8. That's not important. That's going to be the same in every document. The same is true here of action collection, which is a line that's just going to inform Krita that this is going to be a script. Down here, the actions tag that is open right here is to is used to create a new action in the category scripts. And so the contents of this actions category, the tags that are in between the opening actions tag and the closing actions tag, are actually going to be the important stuff, the stuff that we're going to change and the stuff that actually defines what our action does and what it looks like in the configuration menu and such. Now the first tag here that says text, my scripts, is going to be the category underneath the scripts section heading in the keyboard shortcut menu where this particular action will be stored. Now you could change this my scripts text to something else, but I'm going to leave it as my script since I would like to categorize all of the scripts that I custom made myself in one particular place for keyboard shortcut purposes, just for ease of use. The first really important line here is going to be action name equals my action. Now this my action string should actually be the unique string that we provided in the my extension library file that allows creator to determine what action it is. It's that unique string that I told you to remember before. So we're going to want to change this my action to the string that we put in that file, which if you'll recall is my underscore extension underscore test. And this will allow the action file to locate the particular script that we want to execute whenever we perform the keyboard shortcut that we're going to define. Now the next line which is empty is the icon tag. Now you can actually put an image icon here, but apparently that will only display if you're using the KDE Plasma desktop environment. I am not using that desktop environment here. I have the DWM window manager, so I'm not even going to mess with this icon line. It's optional anyway. Nothing has to be here. But if you want a little image icon to appear, this is where you would define the path to it. The next tag here, text my script, is going to be the text that appears in the shortcut editor that represents this action. So we'll probably want to change this to something like my extension, which is the name of our extension. But this is just a string and it can be whatever you want. It should just be something that lets you know in the menu what you are actually changing the shortcut for. The next line, the what's this tag, will actually show up whenever cute calls a what's this action, which is a help seeking action. So you can put something here, some kind of text that you could use to describe what specifically this extension does and what the shortcut is for, but it's optional. You don't have to put that here. And I'm going to keep this as simple as possible, so I'm not going to put that there. The next tag tooltip here on this line will show a message whenever you hover over the option for this shortcut in the menu. This is also an opportunity to put a little bit of explanatory text, but again, I'm not going to mess with that right now. The icon text line here is actually going to be used if this shortcut is displayed in a toolbar. 
So if you put this action on one of your toolbar menus here, you could actually change what it says. Instead of having it say my extension, maybe maybe you want to have a very descriptive name here. Maybe you want to say my very special test extension, which I created and I'm very proud of. If you if that won't fit on your toolbar menu, then you could put something that's smaller like my extension here. Now I'm not going to cover how to actually add them to the toolbar menu. Once again, this is another line that I'm going to leave blank. Now the next important tag here is activation flags on this line. And this is used to determine whether or not a script associated with this action should be active, should be usable. Now, there are several numbers that are used to determine whether or not an action should be active, but the one that we're going to care about is actually going to be 0000, zero, 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 zero five consecutive zeros, because that is the no condition. If activation flags is set to all zeros, then the action associated with this dot action file will always be active. You can always activate it. That's how a script is by default before you make an action file, and we don't want to put any extra limitations on that, so we're just going to make it all zeros. This is a numbered list of conditions, and you can put the particular number for the conditions that need to be met in order for you to be able to activate this shortcut here. But in order to figure out what all of these conditions are by number, you would have to actually refer to the code, which is linked from the documentation page where I found this template. So if you're interested in that, you can click on the link and refer to the actual code for Crito to determine what all the activation condition numbers are. Now, the next important line here is the shortcut line, and this is a place where we can define a string that represents a series of key combinations. The default one that it has here is Control plus Alt plus Shift plus P, which means that the default keyboard shortcut that we're going to use and that will appear in the menu and that we can change from the menu will be Control plus Alt plus Shift plus P. Now, we can of course change this to anything. We could make this Control plus Alt plus Shift plus O or Control plus Alt plus Shift plus M for my extension or what have you. I'm going to go ahead and leave it as the default as Control plus Alt plus Shift plus P because I'm almost 100% certain that that is untaken. But again, this is going to be able to be changed to the menu, so it doesn't really matter what we put here. The next line is checkable. We'll determine whether or not you can enable or disable this shortcut with a checkbox. If you set this from false to true, then you will have a little checkbox beside it, which will allow you to enable or disable this shortcut. The last line here, status tip, is a little tool tip that will appear in a status bar if your action appears in one of those. Again, we're going to not change this at all. We're doing as, as little change as possible. And with that, every line in here is explained. The rest of these are just closing tags. Whenever you create one of these action files, basically the only things that you'll want to be changing are going to be the name, which is going to point to that unique identifier, the text, which is going to refer to the name in the shortcut, and whatever the default shortcut is. Now, there's a lot of other things you can change, again, like the activation conditions, but we're going to keep this as simple as possible. And so with that, we're going to go ahead and write the changes. You can see that we have the my extension action file here, and now we'll need to go ahead and restart Krita. And if we go here to Settings, Configure Krita, and to the keyboard shortcuts, and if we scroll down to Scripts, My Scripts, we can see my extension is set by default to Control Alt Shift P. And we can change it. We can click custom and change that to anything else, like maybe Control Shift Alt W. And then we can click OK. And if I press Control Shift Alt W now, you can see that the script will run. Using action files, you can assign any script that you make that has an action to one of these keyboard shortcuts, one of these configurable keyboard shortcuts, which is, of course, very useful. And with that, I'm finished. Thank you all very much for watching. Hopefully this video was helpful to you. Hopefully, if you're wondering how to create manuals or how to create custom keyboard shortcuts for your Python scripts, this will help you to be able to do that. There's a little more to each one of these topics, especially the actions files, and you can refer to the documentation page that I'm going to link into in the description below, as well as that documentation is linked to the actual source code of Krita to figure out a little bit more about this, if you're interested in that. But what I've covered in this video should be all that you need to know in order to create manuals that look like the manuals that are in Krita by default and shortcuts that work like the shortcuts that are, again, are in Krita by default. This will probably be the last video in the Python scripting in Krita series that I do, uh, at least for a little while. I've covered all of the basics now. And to go beyond this point, you really have to kind of dive into Qt into PyQt5, into maybe some of the inner workings of Krita as a program. And I may cover some of that later, but probably not in the immediate future. But anyways, thank you all for watching. Hopefully this video was helpful to you. Hopefully this series has been helpful to you if you've watched it from beginning to end. Stay tuned for more videos on different topics, particularly Gentoo Linux. And I will see you next time.